Well, good afternoon. Today we're looking at Psalm chapter 99, just the first few verses. It's an interesting text, and let me show you why in just a moment. Beginning in verse number one, the Lord reigneth, and that's, of course, what you expect religious people to say. But as we look further into the psalm, all people of the earth are to acknowledge that, not simply in a church or so the Lord reigneth, and that ought, of course, bring us confidence and joy. And you'll see why again in just a moment. Let the people tremble. He sitteth be <clears throat> rather between, literally above the uh, cherubim, and uh, let the earth be moved. And, of course, uh, more people really ought to be moved, shouldn't they? In verse number two, the Lord is great in Sion, and the reason he says that is to identify who God is, and as you notice in the verse, he's not just the God of Zion, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but he's the God of all the earth, and therefore he says he is high above all the people, not just Jerusalem. In verse number three, let them praise. Here's the proper response when we understand it is the Lord who reigns over the earth and has uh, supreme dominion, sovereignty. It ought to cause us not only to uh, have confidence and joy, but uh, it ought to cause us to worship him, that is, praise him in verse number three, because he's great and awesome, for he is holy. We can't get into the depth of that word, but just a glimpse of that is God is completely distant and separated from us. He is high above mankind infinitely. In verse number four, and this is the verse I want you to think about for just a moment, as I mentioned in the intro. That is, the, the king's strength also loveth justice. Now, let me give you what it says literally there. The might of the Lord loves justice, that is, does what's right, and does establish equity and executes uh, uh, judgment and righteousness in Jacob. Now, I want you to think about this. Uh, historically, and even in our contemporary uh, world, uh, there is so much abuse of power. There are people who live under oppression because of corrupt leaders. And so we understand that uh, why we sometimes fear power, especially absolute power, when uh, rights are denied and injustice occurs. What's interesting here is it says the might or the power of the Lord, and he has all power, he has absolute power, but he loves to do what's right. And uh, those two don't always go together. It kind of reminds me what Paul said about speaking the truth in love. And sometimes the truth is not spoken in love, and sometimes it's not spoken at all. And uh, sometimes uh, the truth is spoken in such a harsh, bitter way that it uh, moves people away from God. And what's interesting here is that the might of the Lord loveth justice. That is, uh, those two go together. The power of God, his strength, his almighty power, he loves justice. That is, he does what's right. And so that's an interesting verse, isn't it? Because that gives us a, a reason to praise him and extol him and have confidence and joy in him. We need to remember, I think, sometimes about the God whom we serve. God is a holy God. He's distant, separated from us. He is supreme, and yet his mercy and his justice and his strength and his power uh, go together. What an interesting thought. And so those are some of the things I'd like you to ponder on the, today about how the Lord loves justice, though he has all the power to do what's right. And so we'll be talking tomorrow in Psalm 100, and we hope to see you then tomorrow at noon.